Hello, uh, Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I'm continuing off my discussions on the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, and some recent papers that have shown a, that it has actually slowed down um, about 15% uh, since uh, 1950 or so. That's according to one paper. The other paper said that the slowdown was at least over uh, about 150 years could have been, you know, much over much more more recent time period, but but their data didn't didn't discriminate. So here is the Gulf Stream coming up here. Um, what we're seeing is this cold blob here, which is also which is um, the subpolar gyre, and it's a it's it's uh, like a global warming hole, if you like. It's an area where you know if you look at long term trends of warming on the planet, it's a cold area. Um, it's not warming as fast as other areas. That originally was attributed to water coming down from meltwater from the rapidly melting Greenland and, and the higher melt rates from sea ice, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, it didn't really make sense. Uh, so back in Paris in, at the COP, uh, 20 in, in, uh, COP 21 in Paris, um, I talked to a number of people you know, I said, look, it looks like just the Gulf Stream slowing down because it's getting a lot warmer here and that it's getting a lot colder here. So the Gulf Stream used to carry heat across here and now it carries less heat. It's shifted, um, it's slowing down and it's coming closer and overriding the coastline. There's a lot more friction and impediment to flow. So it's staying over the continental shelves here. It's not getting here. We get a cold area here. And basically, so that was uh, December 2015. You know, and now, uh, you know, a couple years later, a year, couple, couple years later more, um, the papers are actually coming and, and supporting uh, the arguments I was making a while ago. So what we're seeing here is, um, it, you know, and it's bringing more heat off of the East Coast. And of course, you know, when we go into the fall, you know, the land's cooling and we're getting a lot of water vapor coming over. We're getting these massive storms and also um, you know, in, 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 in the, uh, you know, in the shoulder seasons, um, we're getting a lot more snow, these massive, uh, nor'easter storms. Um, and this is, uh, it's all related. It's all related to these, these currents. So I was back here talking about this article about the current being the weakest in 1600 years. And, um, Basically, what would happen is Western Europe would get far more extreme winters because it has less heat being carried across. Sea levels um, rise fast on the eastern seaboard of the U.S. because the Gulf Stream is now pushing and overriding onto the uh, U.S. continental shelf, raising the sea level. Also, hot water expands, so uh, this, that raises the sea level. So we saw a sea level rise of, you know, a massive... Uh, sea level rise um, in around 2010, um, you know, off the U.S. coast, and like areas up in Maine and stuff, and that was attributed to the, uh, you know, that that's it's really it's because of this Gulf Stream slowdown and then overriding on onto the continental shelf. Um, it also would disrupt uh, vital tropical rains in the tropics. Um, so the current is 50% weaker than around 400 AD. This is according to one paper since 1950, according to the other paper. Okay, so the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. Meridional in the north-south direction, it's in the Atlantic Basin, it's overturning, so it's vertical movement of water. Um, and uh, so the, the warm water moves northward, cools, become denser. It's also saltier, it sinks, flows back southward, um, and uh, global warming hinders this cooling of the water, melting ice in the Arctic brings fresh water, um, and it weakens the current, the current can shut off, and instead of, um, instead of basically, instead of the deep water formation areas being here and here, this one can vanish, um, and then the deep water area is uh, this one, and then this one could slow down, and we can get, you know, we, we can get a, 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 a deep water formation at a much lower latitude, and we have much less heat going up here. So we get a rewiring, and then there's less water, warm water moving north, there's more moving south, okay? And, and so we can get warming, uh, you know, as, we, as we, we can get a seesaw pattern between Antarctica and, and the Arctic. So, uh, so let's get back into 
what this is talking about changes in the ice age um, and uh, you know what happened to the water there and it talks about the day after tomorrow the 2004 movie I remember that movie it's, it doesn't seem like it was 14 years ago um, okay so let's have a look at some of the details of these two papers so this is uh, this is one by C Caesar Ramsdorf Robinson Foilner and Saba, and it just came out uh, last week, just recently. Okay, so uh, you know, early early April, the AMOC um, has a major impact on climate. Yet its evolution during the industrial area era, so since 1750, is poorly known due to lack of direct measurements of the water current. But we've had measurements in the last little while with these ocean buoys and stuff. And we're seeing temperature distribution changes, which are showing. So this paper is basically showing a weakening of the AMOC by about three plus or minus one spur drops. Three, this is about 15%. So the total flow is about 20 spur drops. 15% of that is three. How much is a spur drop? It's, it's a large flow of water. It's like something like a million, uh, 10 to the six. Uh, meters cubed per second, the flow rate, something like that. Um, basically, one spur drop. If you take all the rivers of the world flowing into the ocean, that's about one spur drop. Okay? Um, it's about one spur drop. So, three, a change of three, three times the flow rate of all the rivers in the world. It's a, it's a huge drop. Um, and uh, this, this weakening is revealed by a spatial and seasonal sea surface temperature fingerprint. In other words, the cold blob in the cold subpolar gyre and the much warmer air Gulf Stream. Um, so there's a fingerprint associated with it. So it, this, this paper goes on and talks about, you know, the importance of the AMOC, transfer of heat, redistributes heat on the planet, affects the climate, highly nonlinear system, critical threshold. Okay, it doesn't just slow, you know, it slowed down 15%. It wouldn't just slow down linearly. Okay, it would reach a threshold and then suddenly it would plummet and shut off or reconfigure. Okay, um, it, it's, its operation, its flow depends on a balance of temperature and salinity effects on the density. It's one of the main tipping elements in the climate system or tipping point. Um, in the past, changes in the AMOC have been responsible for some of the strongest and most rapid climate shifts in the past 2.6 million years, known as a quaternary. Um, and it has global impacts, right? A slowdown of the AMOC has a, there's a southward shift of the tropical rainfall belt, uh, the ITCZ, Intertropical Convergence Zone. Um, you get a warming of the Southern Ocean and Antarctica as this thing slows down because it means less heat is transported from the equator into the Northern Hemisphere, more heat is going into the Southern Hemisphere. So it's important to better understand it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so Basically, uh, a comparison is done of climate models and the observations. And here are some of the results. So this is a model, these are model results that double the CO2 level in the atmosphere. So instead of, <coughs> excuse me, 280 parts per million uh, pre-industrial, it's 560 a doubling. And you can see the sea surface temperature trend here. Um, and what you can see is warming here and a cooling here, which is, now this is the data. This is a control with no CO2 change. And uh, this is the data that we're seeing. And so you can see this warm area. So the Gulf Stream coming up here is slowing down. The heat is sticking around in this area. This area is cooling because the Gulf Stream is not getting up there where it used to get up. Okay, so that's basically what that's showing. Here's a more detailed uh, view of the model here. Um, and again, you can see this feature, but it's more defined here. And this is the data. So we're, the data, the model agreement in the Atlantic Basin is, is, is very good. Um, this is showing the, uh, when you run the model, this is how the sea surface temperature anomaly changes. So this is the region here that gets cooler. This region here gets warmer. You can see the sea surface temperature anomalies in Kelvin. A change of one Kelvin is a change of one Celsius. So you can see that this area here, this water here is getting, this is, a, this is an increase of um, 
the uh, so this is a, an increase of you know one and a half to two degrees here and a decrease of temperature in this region you know of one degree more than one degree and this is the the anomaly of the AMOC flow okay the water flow in Sverdrup so we're down about four Sverdrups here and the flow up here is uh, you know th there's more flow here this way in this region and there isn't in, in and there's less flow there so we're getting an, an impede imped imped a slowing down or a blocked uh, Gulf Stream if you like um, there's some more data here um, this is the um, these are the anomalies. This is the uh, subpolar gyre region, where, or the warming hole, if you like, um, showing a drop here. Okay, and this is sea surface temperature anomaly here, and this is the, the flow rate in Sverdrup anomaly here. Um, okay, so uh, I don't want to go into too many more details. I did see uh, Lenton's name. Here we go. This is a great paper. You can find this online. Tipping Elements in the Earth's Climate System uh, from 2008. It's a great paper talking about all the different tipping elements and, uh, you know, trying to sort of get people to, trying to sort of get scientists views on which ones are, are most significant, which ones are, should we worry about the most. There's a lot of supplemental pictures um, here of different changes um, and they all show this sort of pattern here, you know, cold area here warm area here, which is a fingerprint, if you like. This is a model, this is a data, you know, for the globe. What, one thing that's interesting to note is that the, um, you know, the correlation here between the model and the data is very good in the Atlantic Basin, but it's, it's uh, much less, um, must, it's not doing that well in the rest of the, the planet. Um, you know, it's more accurate for the Atlantic Basin, just point that out. Uh, lots of supplementary uh, details. Um, we've seen these graphs. Um, the subpolar uh, gyre region. Here's what it is. Um, here, here's what it was in originally in, in models, including lots of the Labrador Sea, and now it's more confined just to this region, um, because this is where we're. This is more of the configuration of, of the uh, global warming hole or the cooling area that we're seeing. So the model was, was tweaked to more better represent that. Okay, so this is another paper that came out um, by a different group here. And they looked at, um, they looked at what happened in the last 150 years. Um, they, well, they found that the, sorry, they looked back and they found that the, um, the weak, anomalously weak Labrador Sea convection and Atlantic overturning during the past 150 years. I think their study actually looked back further, but they, they used, um, they used, they took uh, cores. They took cores um, in the, uh, so let's go and see what they did here. So they took uh, cores in the ocean floor here and the sedimentation rates were, you know, 0.5 to one centimeter uh, per, per year. So much faster than much deeper parts of the ocean by probably a factor of 10 or so. And what they did is they measured the uh, size of the grains in the cores. So when the current was flowing fast, only the really fine particles will settle down in, into the sediments. And when the, when the current here, the water current was slowing down, then the, uh, it couldn't carry uh, the, the, the bigger particles. So the bigger particles will settle. So if you had a whole bunch of small particles, in uh, making up the sediments in the core that you're extracting from the ocean floor, then the water current's faster. And, and when you get larger, uh, larger grain sizes, then the current is uh, slowing down. So you can get an idea of what the current is here and correlate it to the regions up here and correlate it to the AMOC. So that's the gist of the study. Um, and I'm not gonna go into all of the details except um, some of the things here you can see are um, this is the temperature, um, uh, you know, off the east coast of the U.S., the northwest, Atlant of, the northwest of the Atlantic Basin. Um, over the shelf, you can see water temperature rising, so the Gulf Stream is jamming. Um, in the northeast, you can see the temperature going down. The, the Gulf Stream is not getting there, so it's getting colder. You can see the AMOC slowing down. And I'm going to continue this in, in another video because I'm out of time. Thank you.